Hello everyone and welcome back. Jeb Smith here. So in today's video, we are going to discuss the California housing market in more detail. We're going to pull up a report from the California Association of Realtors that goes into detail about different counties across the state of California, what took place in the state with regards to prices, where did we end the, in the year with, with inventory, and what we're likely to see moving forward into the 2021 housing market. We're gonna talk about some of those things that took place in 2020 and how those are likely to have an effect on the 2021 housing market as we progress, as we start to heat up over the next couple of months. And I'm also going to give you you know, boots on the ground, somebody that's actually out there selling real estate, helping buyers buy real estate. I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing out there right now and what you're likely to expect if you're a buyer looking to buy a house in this market, if you're a seller looking to sell a house in this market. Now, as you know, all real estate is local and I'm here in Southern California, but you know, in talking to agents all across the country, a lot of what I'm experiencing here is happening all across the United States. So, you know, this information, while it applies to California, is likely going to apply to a lot of different markets out there. So I encourage you, you know, to work with a professional, have these conversations with a professional. If you're if you're listening to this and, and you have questions, find someone in your market that can help. If you don't have that person, reach out to me directly. I'm happy to to make that connection for you. But what I want to do is I, I want to start by, by pulling up that report from the California Association of Realtors, talk about what we saw last year in the housing market, how much appreciation did we see in, in, you know, in various counties, which were the, you know, the, the counties that benefited the most with regards to appreciation, and, and where did we end the year with inventory? What are we seeing? How, how fast are properties going into escrow? Because I think that is important if you're looking to potentially buy or sell in this market. So let's take a minute and dive into that report. So here we go. Existing single family homes sales totaled 509,750 in December. That's up 0.2% from November and up nearly 28% from a year ago. So, you know, sales in December up 28% from 2019 in December alone. December statewide median home price was 717,930. That's up 2.7% from November and nearly 17% from December December of 2019. So the median home price up 17%. Now that doesn't mean that you gained 17% in, in, in equity, but it means you gained a lot of appreciation last year if you owned a home in the state of California in most counties. For 2020 as a whole, sales of existing statewide homes were up 3.5% from last year. So existing home sales are up quite a bit from one year ago. Now this is where we're gonna start talking about some regional data. We're gonna talk about different counties. At the regional level, sales increased by double digits in all major regions in December. Uh, where a year-over-year -year gain of about 20% for each region except the Central Coast region. The San Francisco Bay Area remained on the top with the highest gain of 40.2% over last year. Crazy. Um, followed by Southern California, 31.4%. The Far North at 30.8%. Central Valley, 22.2%. Um, and so on and so forth. And now this is a stat that I think is crazy. As a result, cars, California Association of Realtors unsold inventory index dropped to 1.3 months in December. So that means if no new homes came on the market in December uh, of last year, now we're, we're moving towards February at this point. So this is, data is about a month old. That means that in 1.3 months, there would be no homes for sale. So normally in a normal market, um, you know, that, that unsold uh, inventory is probably between six to seven months, um, more balanced market. So buyers and sellers are equal somewhere around six, you know, six months of inventory right now are at 1.3%. Except for the Bay Area, all major regions experienced a year-over-year -year decline of 35% 35, 35 or more in four sale properties in December. Central Valley had the biggest drop of 50.9% December, followed by Calif Southern California at 50.5%, Central Coast 44.3%, the far north 40% and the San Francisco Bay Area at 15.5%. So year over year decline um, of, of four sale properties in December. We talked about this. It's a time of year when, when you know people just typically don't list their homes for sale because of everything going on this year, amplified due to the pandemic, 
you know, just less properties on the market because of that. People don't want people walking through their houses with all of this going on, and therefore you had less property on the market. The median number of days it took to sell a California single family home was 11 days. So from the time it went on the market to the time it went into escrow, 11 days on the market. That's absurd. Um, and that's down nearly, that's down from 28 days a year ago in December. So you can see almost a third less in, in how long it took to sell a home uh, in December of 2020 versus 2019. Car statewide sales price to list ratio was 100.1% in December and 98.3% in December of 2019. So what does that mean? That means if a property was listed for 600,000, it essentially sold for just over 600,000 because it was 100.1%. So just over 100%. So that means that, you know, all of those people telling you that, you know, that it's a pan pandemic going on that you can offer substantially less for a property or that you should lowball an offer, it's not really happening, right? The majority of properties sold at the asking price. And now keep in mind, they need to be priced at fair market value. You can't just ask anything and get your number. Um, th there has to be some, you know, it has to be reasonable, if you will. Um, and, and even last year, December 2019, uh, you know, it was at 98.3%. So still a solid number, but this year even way more solid, selling at nearly 100%. At the regional level, all major regions posted an increase in the median price from last year by more than 10%. So huge there. I'm going to go over these numbers real quick, and then we'll get into what I'm seeing as an agent um, out there selling property. So California single-family homes, December of this year, 717 930 for the median price. Um, in, in November, it was 698 980 a year ago, 614,880, uh, up 2.7 percent year over year, 16.8 percent. That's for single-family homes, condos. You can see um, basically straight line across the board from from this year versus last year, uh, or month over month, and then versus last year, a nine percent gain uh, this year. So, Southern California, where I'm located. December 650, November it was 657, 820. Last year this time, 575. So down 1.2% month over month. And we talked about why that was probably the case, just no properties out there to buy. Um, therefore, you know, it's going to affect sales. Um, and But we saw a 13% increase year over year. And down here, Southern California, again, breaks down into counties. I'm gonna talk Orange County where I'm located here. Uh, but Orange County, 950 uh, in December versus 930 in November. Last year, this time, 840. So a 2.2% increase month over month and a 13.1% increase uh, year over year. And that is, uh, here we go, unsold inventory. So we talked about inventory a minute ago. 1.3% or 1.3 months of supply of homes in December versus 1.9 in November. Um, you know, and, and median time on the market, 11 days. November, it was nine days. Townhomes, 17 days versus 14 days. And we go down here to break it into county where I am, 11 days on the market uh, right now. So very, very little time frame from a property goes on the market till it goes into escrow. And that's why you've got to be quick and get out there and, and be ready. Um, if, if you're willing, if you're out there looking, you've got to be pre-qualified. You've got to be pre-approved. You've got to make sure you're in the position to write an offer. Otherwise, it's going to be gone by the time you, you know you, you get an opportunity to do it. Now, 11 days may seem like a long time, but if a property goes in the market, you give it three or four days to um, for people to get in to view it or what have you, and then you counter offer and you go back and forth. You know, with counter offers, you're probably talking seven or eight days just right there. So. You know, if you're not getting in there in those early appointments, chances are you're not going to have an opportunity to put an offer on our property. But let's talk, take a minute and talk about what I'm seeing as an agent that's helping buyers, helping sellers. Now, as an agent helping buyers, what I'm seeing is, you know, by the time a buyer sends me a property or I send a buyer a property and we're scheduling the appointment, a lot of times within a day, within two days of them being active on the market and having appointments, they already have multiple offers if it's priced right. Uh, you know, a lot of clients, uh, you know, that we're trying to schedule property to see if it's been on the market more than a week, the, the, the clients, the sellers, the seller's agents not even allowing us in there to see it because they already have so many offers that they're willing to consider. So it's tough out there for buyers right now. Know that you need to have, you know, be ready to, to, 
you know, to make an offer if you like the property. I mean, that's not to say you need to buy a property this year. That's just saying if you want that property, you've got to be in a position to write an offer quickly. Um, and chances are you're going to have competition. So for all those people out there that say, I don't want to be in a bidding war, I don't want to, you know, go back and forth, probably not the market for you in most cases. Chances are you're going to have some competition in a lot of different price points throughout the state of California. So understand that, you know, when putting offers, chances are you're going to have to compete against other people, which means that you might have to go above the asking price. So know in know that in advance and make sure you're working with a professional, somebody that can guide you in the right direction, somebody that can tell you, hey, the last five cells in this community actually sold for 2% or whatever the number is above the asking price. That way you have an idea going in that it may sell for X amount above the asking price when putting in your offer and knowing how to negotiate. Now, I've done other videos where I've discussed what you should do, you know, ways to win offers, things that help you stand out, which I'll link to here if you want to take a look at it. But as a seller, what should you do in this market? What am I seeing? Sellers, if your home is priced correctly in this market, regardless of the price point, chances are you're going to have multiple offers, especially if you're in the lower end of price points. Now, when I say lower end for Southern California, I'm going to say this is going to sound crazy, but I'm going to say under a million. Under a million in my market is absolutely nuts. Um, I'll give you two different examples of a property that I sold and one that a friend of mine who's an agent sold about a week ago. The one that I'm talking about just listed it here in Huntington Beach. It's a price point at 850. It's a three bedroom, two bath, uh, 1,270 something square foot property on a 6,600 square foot lot. It was listed on Friday as a coming soon listing, so that means it would be active today. And I probably received no less than 75 calls over the weekend from agents that wanted to get in there, schedule some time to see it between Monday and Tuesday, find out when we're getting offers, etc. Offers uh, showing started this morning at 10 a.m. And uh, I don't know what time it is now, uh, maybe 2 o'clock. And we already have offers on the property. Um, and chances are we're going to have more than than our fair share of offers to negotiate. Now, where it's going to end up, I can't tell you exactly, but it will be over the asking price and the property was priced at fair market value. So it's going to sell for more than fair market value with multiple offers. The other example I'm talking about here is, is kind of wild. Now, this is in the lower price points for Southern California. Um, this property was a single family. It was priced at 510, 515-ish. And after three days of sh uh, of showings, which I think it was 116 showings, uh, they had 67 offers, and the thing sold for well, well, well above the asking price, um, more than 50,000 more. I you know I don't I don't know the exact number right off the top of my head, or I do, but I'm not going to disclose it. So that just shows you how much demand there is out there. So anybody telling you that you know, the market is, is, is about to slow down. Just understand there are a lot of buyers out there missing out on property. So as more property becomes available, more people, you know, you, you still have those buyers that missed out. They're going to put offers in on property, assuming it, it matches close to what they're looking for. Therefore, this market still has a lot of steam left in it. Inventory likely isn't going anywhere for any um, you know, for, for at least the next six to eight months, there's a lot of moratoriums in place at the moment with regards to evictions and foreclosures. We know that's going to uh, be pushed out and right now through March uh, could or yeah, through March could actually be pushed out even further into September if uh, Biden's uh, 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 stimulus goes through. If it gets voted on, you know, chances are it's going to have that piece in it, which is going to push that out even further. So you got a lot of things playing into it. Inventory is not going to change anytime soon. Doesn't mean you need to buy a property or sell a property, um, but it just you know this is there to to give you an idea of what to expect if you're thinking of selling. You know it's all about uh, pricing it right, and it's all about you know having the right things done if you're if you're ready to make an offer. So. You know, as we get more information on this, as we get updates on the housing market, things that might affect the housing market, you know, things I'm seeing in the housing market that could benefit you um, and provide you some guidance and clarity in the market, I'll continue to put those out there for you. Um, but if you have, you know, questions for me, do me a favor, comment below. If you haven't done so already and you appreciate this con comment, uh, if you haven't done so already and you appreciate this content, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Uh, but for now, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. 
appreciate the support. We'll see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.